Hi everyone, Sylvia here once again, and I just want to welcome you all to today's reading. We're going to be reading from Isaiah 52, starting at verse number 13, and we're going to go to 57. As always, there's so much in there for us to glean, to receive the nuggets, the treasures that God has placed there for us, because the Word of God was written by God, the Holy Spirit, and He wants us to grow in wisdom and knowledge. When I read the Word, I always read it wanting to see God, because I want to know more about Him. You know, I want to know more about the One who created every one of us, that has a plan and a purpose and a destiny, individually and collectively for each of us. The One who chose Israel to be His bride that He loves and all the things that He's done even the righteous judgments with the main goal and the intention of restoring and bringing back the one that he loves. See, God devised a plan and he devised that plan before the foundation of the earth because the truth is he knew that mankind would fail. God was not surprised and shocked when Adam and Eve ate that fruit. Nor is he surprised and shocked when you and I have sinned, made mistakes, and did things wrong. His main purpose and goal that he desires is to reconcile and to restore. See, in the garden, he gave us a picture of what God considered to be the perfect existence man created to walk with him in the cool of the day. And he's been doing everything he can in order to bring his desired outcome, his expected intentions back into fruition. And he knew that we weren't going to be able to do it for ourselves. And so he devised a plan to send his son and that son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And as much as we know, there's so much more for us to know. And I want us in Isaiah again in 52, and I believe it's verse 13 is where we're going to start. I'm going to read it. And when I read it, I want you to see Christ like never before. Go beyond the Hollywood movies. Go beyond the stages, the, the uh, plays, the platforms, and all of those things. And let's go back to the Word of God. Breadcrumb. See God through God's own eyes. And then we grow into appreciation and adepts. And it takes away our wondering, does God love me? Does God care? Absolutely, he does. And he demonstrated it. The Father loves you. The Son and the Holy Spirit. He loves us. And he gave the treasure. Do you know that Christ is the treasure from heaven? And he gave the treasure from heaven for you and I. Let's look and see what it says. In 13, it says, See how my servant will succeed. He will be raised up and exalted, highly honored, just as many was appalled by him because he was so disfigured they didn't, that he didn't even seem human and simply no longer look like a man. I want you to think about that. Jesus, they were appalled by him. He didn't look human or like a man. He suffered because of his great love, and he suffered in obedience to the Father, but his great love for you and I, knowing that that was the only way we could be reconciled, we could be redeemed and restored to the Father. What will not God do for you and I? And that's what we need to remember because as he loved us, remember he came to the Jews first. How much does he love them and how much will he not do in order to redeem, reconcile, restore, and renew them back to himself? God's heart desire and cry is simply return to me, return to me. And that's to the Jews and that's to you and I. But Jesus, think about it. You know, I often believe that, and I'll speak for myself, didn't really understand the, the extent of his suffering because, see, when I looked at movies and saw plays and things, his suffering and what he went through, the beatings and all, it was barely anything. 
But it says that he didn't even look like a human being or a man anymore. Can you imagine the suffering? And I pray that that will help us that no matter what you're going through, remember that God will never require more of you and I than he himself was not willing to do. And he has not done for each of us already. There is suffering, but there is reward and there's renewal in the suffering. Jesus already demonstrated that. And he even told us in the New Testament that he suffered and therefore so would we. But again, our suffering is not in vain. So wherever you are, whatever you're going through, it's not in vain. The one who loves you, the lover of your soul is with you and he's already suffered more than we could ever imagine. Ever imagine. He understands and he is with us. And then he goes on to say that, so now he will startle many nations because of him. Kings will be speechless for they will see what they had not been told and they will ponder things they have never heard. See, Jesus is going to cause kings and to be speechless and nations to be startled. In other words, the things that he did, it was for a purpose and it was for a reason. And see, this because they didn't know, they didn't understand, and they didn't receive him. One day they will. And as the nation of Israel was, so will all the others. God is coming and he's going to reveal exactly who he is and what he has done and what he will do. See Christ in this. See the pain. See the suffering. See that he did it for you. He did it for I. And God has, he did it for me. God has determined that we are well worth it. In 53, it says, who believes our report? To whom is the arm of Adonai revealed? For before him, he grew up like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He was not well formed or especially handsome. We saw him, but his appearance did not attract us. People despised and avoided him. A man of pain, well acquainted with illness, like someone from whom people turned their faces, he was despised, so they did not value him. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, my goodness. Do you see and hear all that is in there? Again, who is the one that grew up like a plant before him? Christ Jesus before God. So he became ordinary and simple. Though he was 100% God and 100% man, but he grew up before the Father as nothing extraordinary. We would have not have been drawn to him. We would have not been pulled to him. That's why it's so important that we get out of, again, Hollywood, get out of movies, get out of the plays and the depiction, get to the word and see. He became common. He was rich. He became low for you and I. He became without esteem, without position, without a title. He became all of those things so that we could become the righteousness of God, so that we could become the sons of daughters, the sons and daughters of God. And so that he could also show us that God is no respecter of person and that his plan and his purpose for us is not based on our title, our bank account, or anything. It is simply based on our willingness to obey God and to live our lives in surrender and submission to him. The final thing that I want to share with you is that Christ did it all. He paid the price for you and I, and he is the one that freed us from sin. See, we don't have to sin. We can walk with him. Are we going to make mistakes and error? Yes, there's a difference. Willfully intentional sin is different, but he removed that burden. He took your pain. He took your punishment. And in doing that, saints, I think we should ask ourselves, what is it that we're not willing and can we not do for him? 
God bless you. Enjoy your reading. And I pray you see Christ Jesus because he is all in the New Testament. That you see him in light of his truth and in light of who he is. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. Amen.